All right, welcome back everybody. We have 2.5 C arrays. Now, we are really putting a an, an emphasis on the C arrays here. This is from the C programming language. Um, and the reason why I'm choosing to focus on C arrays instead of C++ arrays or vectors as of right now is this is the type of array that I, I see in other languages. So it's very important to learn this type. We will be focusing on C++ arrays and C++ vectors in future lessons, um, and even having a little bit of conversation at the end of this one. Okay, so let's start with the problem. The problem is, up until now, if you've wanted to, you know, maybe take multiple user responses, whoa, okay. You wanted to take multiple user responses. You had to create different variables for that, maybe like a user response one or a user response two, and let's use the same one and you wrote over it, right? But, you know, start to think about maybe a video game, um, you know, and, and all the variables that would be in a video game. You'd have like an attack, you'd have health, armor maybe for, what, 100 players in a game? Are you really going to manually create all of those variables or are we going to start to look for ways to shorten those? Uh, and that's what really brings us to arrays. They help us deal with this situation where we need to store many, many pieces of data that are all related to each other. So let's look at how we make an array or how we initialize an array. I'm gonna show you three, well, I'm gonna show you four different types, okay? The first thing you need to know about, about an array is you have to put these brackets. These brackets, just like when you were working with strings and you use those brackets to represent a specific index to get a specific character, well, a string is an array, right? A string is a character array. So you're really, you're kind of, you're kind of doing what you just did with strings. We're just now making our own and we're using data, different data types, okay? So we go and we put the data type, we give it a name, and after the name, we put the brackets to say, I wanna make an array. Now, inside the brackets, we put how many uh, different pieces of data it can store. So here, this creates 10 ints equal to zero because we can give them any values, all right? This is kind of important. In this one line, we just created 10 variables. That's, that's pretty big. Instead of having to do 10 separate ones with separate names, they all have one name and they get an index number, just like our string said. This line right here, notice how I made two. I wanted this to have only two pieces of information, but then I went using the assignment operator and in between braces, separated by commas, I'm able to actually put the data if I wanna give it the data right now. This first one, I would later have to use an index number. So here we made 10, zero to nine, and access a specific index to put a value there. Here, I'm doing it at the same time. I'm saying two pieces, two elements, and element, the first one is zero, the second one is one, okay? Now with kind of taking this previous one, with this second one here, we said we have five elements, but we actually only filled three of them. So there's still two more, they're just set to zero, okay? And now I wanted to show you another one because we can do this with more than just ints. We can do int arrays, double arrays, string arrays, even when we get to our own custom classes, we can do our own custom arrays, okay? Uh, you just put a different data type there. Now notice how between the brackets we put nothing, okay? emptiness, and then we actually gave it values, which you would have to do if you made them empty. This lets the compiler determine the length. The compiler, as it goes through your code, it's gonna look at the yes, the no, and the maybe, and go, well, that's three, so create an array of three elements, okay? Now, the most important thing you need to take away from this is this little tag that I put down here. Arrays have fixed lengths. Once you define them, their size cannot change. So this more inputs, we gave it five, it has five elements now. We cannot give it a six element, okay? And we cannot change it later to have more elements, we'd have to create a new array. And that's why this example might be important. Maybe you know a couple of the pieces of data that you need, but you need to have some more for later, okay? So, you know, be careful on that, all right? Maybe anticipate extra if you need extra. Okay. Let's talk about how to print out an array, all right? If you look at this string array here, it's the same one as the last one, the yes, no, maybe. 
and it's just like when we access individual characters from strings, you know, this would be index zero, this would be index one, this would be index two. So we would get yes, no, and a maybe, okay? So it's, it's just like strings, so I don't feel like I have to go into it since that was, you know, what, two lessons ago? Yep, two lessons ago. Um, so yeah, we access it with an index number. Pretty straightforward, all right? Okay. Now let's talk about what happens when you try to access an element that doesn't exist, okay? If you look here, right, when, you know, we make a, you know, same thing, yes, no, maybe, and we try to print out the fifth element, which doesn't actually exist, right? You get a warning. Notice how this is not a compile time error. This is just a warning. Array index five is past the end of the array, which contains three elements. But this program still compiled, which means if the program still compiles, it will still run, okay? That's kind of crucial to understand here. And we're gonna we're gonna see exactly well, what would happen if you print out something that you know that isn't you know if you try to access an element that doesn't exist okay and this is a big cause for a lot of errors here all right let's jump to some quick code okay so we're gonna do just some basic stuff here we're gonna do some basic arrays some basic printing and then we're gonna test out that what happens when, you know, when we access an element that doesn't exist. So I'm gonna do different stuff. I wanna use doubles because we haven't seen them. And so I go data type name, like I'm making a standard variable, and I'm just going to let the computer, no, I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hard code this. I'm gonna say we're gonna do three equals and then braces, I'm gonna do 1.1, 2.2, and 3.3, .3, okay? Now, if I want, you know, remember, we have zero, one, and then two. Okay, so three spaces, indexes, zero, one, two. If I want to print out 2.2, that means I have to use the name of the array and pass it, nope, the one, right? Because zero, then one. So let's just test to make sure all this is working out so far. Okay, let me compile here. Okay, and we get 2.2, awesome. So they're very much like our strings, okay? All right, now we basic, you know, creation, basic printing, let's change this to a five now, and let's see what happens, which that index does not exist. So we go to compile. Wow, we didn't even get a warning on this one. And I go to print it, and we get this extremely weird number. Now, to give you a little background here on why we may have not gotten this warning is um, the one for the picture was compiled on Mac OS and the one we're doing right now is compiled in Linux. Uh, and you, you know, you might see some different stuff because uh, they're probably using different types of compilers and different versions, okay? Now, this random number means nothing, okay? It means absolutely nothing. And that could be a problem, especially if we try to use this number like it means something, all right? So be careful not to access over the amount of the array, all right? All right, let's go back here. Let's talk about arrays as arguments and parameters. So we just learned how to send information to a function, how to receive information from a function, and now we wanna see how to do this with arrays. So here down, down here, we created a print array function, okay? Now the print array function is absolutely crucial. And the reason why it's absolutely crucial is you cannot print all of these values by just calling the array name. And I'm gonna show you why that is in the, in the live code, okay? I'm gonna show you what that output looks like, all right? Wow, this was not a, <laughs> this should be an A there. Um, so in order to write an array as a parameter, you, it's basically the first chunk. So you give it a data type, a name, and you put brackets. You don't put anything in the brackets, just leave the brackets because depending on the size that's sent, let's let the compiler decide what that size will be. Now notice how we have a length here that we're sending also, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to dynamically get that length later, 
But here you can see as an argument, we just sent the number, all right? This is crucial. We have no way for C style arrays, as of right now, to tell what the actual length of the array is without using built-in functions. So let's let's just you know run it ourselves, okay? And you're gonna see this a lot in practice, and I'll show you kind of how other functions find out what the length is, okay? Pretty much in the next slide. All right, I'm all over the place. Let's get a little focus here. Okay, in order to send the array, notice how we just put the name here, okay? Arrays are the first example of what we call pass by reference. So what is a reference, all right? A reference is a location in memory, all right? When you store a string array in memory, you know, you're gonna have a space for yes, and the very next space will be no, and the very next space will be maybe. It'll use a continuous block of memory. And so the way we get to the next one is we find the first one and we start moving to the next ones, okay? So when you wanna print out maybe, it's gonna go find the location of the first one and move down. Well, because we don't wanna copy all this information, because remember, pass by value takes a copy so if I passed an integer to a function before, sorry, it takes a copy of it. Well, an array could have 10,000, 100,000 pieces of data. We don't wanna be copying all that data all the time. So what happens is when we send it even more, what we're really sending it is the reference, the location and memory of the very first piece in the array so that we can move from here to the next pieces. Okay, because we know that arrays are stored right, you know, in, in a pattern right after each other. So if we know the first one, we know where the rest of them are. Okay, now that is pretty complicated. And that is really starting to get to the conversation about pointers, which we're not having yet. I feel like I say that kind of stuff a lot. All right, for now, understand that you send the name of the array. You should write your function also take the size, maybe hard coded or, or maybe dynamically later. And then you can use a for loop to just loop through. And notice how we use the length right here. Okay, we take the length and we use that to stop our for loop so we do not go beyond the length of the array, okay? Now, how do we get it dynamically? This is looking a lot more interesting, right? And we're gonna, we're gonna prove this, we're gonna test this, okay? Pretty much using this code. Now, if you look, uh, you know, this is a throwback using that size of operator. The size of operator tells you how many bytes um, you know, some, even more is, okay? Now this is, yeah, this is a definite throwback. So remember that your int, your integer is like, you know, eight bytes. Well, your string will hard code to, I believe, I think it's like 24 bytes. It'll hard code this to be 24 bytes, okay? Like every string you make could be 24 bytes. So that means if you have three strings, you would have a total of 72 bytes, okay? So if I take the um, total amount of bytes of the entire array and I divide it, in fact, let's look right here. Yeah, this is getting complicated, I know. We're gonna do an example, it's gonna make much more sense there. If I take the total amount of bytes of the array and divide it by the amount of bytes for the first element, since all the elements should have the same, then I will know, I'll, you know, I'll get how many elements there actually are. So there's three strings, that would be 72 bytes. So 72 bytes would go here. Each string is only 24 bytes. We divide, we get three. Okay, so I know there's three elements. So this would be the way of dynamically getting it, especially if you ask like the user to tell you the size, right? Uh, you could get it this way, okay? A little bit more complicated, right? And we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna dive through this. I think this is gonna be one's gonna be much easier to understand this live code and speak of the devil. Okay, let's do some live code in. All right, so here, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it with strings. So we have string my array, and we're gonna hard code it to three equals, and let's just do, whoa. Okay, let's do hey, let's do hi, Hello, just picking some random stuff, okay? So we know that this is three three strings, okay? All right, 
let's start using our size of operator here. Okay, so let's go size of, and let's just send it the total, you know, the whole array and see what it prints, okay? So here we go, we printed out 96. Oh, that's interesting. I'm on a different computer now, so it, it might be um, defaulting these string sizes to be a different one because that's what my Mac OS did. So let's print out the size of the original one, okay, or the first index. And that'll give us a good picture to see, you know, what does this computer default those strings to be? We get a 32. So it does, you know, use a default number a little bit higher, which is why we take the overall and divide it by the first element because arrays are single type, right? It's either all strings or all ends and stuff like that, okay? So watch this, we'll go divide, size of, we'll send it the very first element. Let's get rid of this line. And let's compile and run and look at that, three elements. So let's add an element, let's add a fourth element here. Let's call it element. What do we got here? What do we got here? Oh yeah, I hard coded that three. Let's get rid of that. So that's dynamic here. And we get the four, okay? So awesome, right? This, this method of taking the total amount of bytes for the array and dividing by the size of bytes for a single element will always give you the size. Now I know right now, we can clearly see in our program that there's four, but again, if we start letting the user choose things, you know, we may not always know how much is in there and this will give us a pretty good guarantee, okay? Now let's write, well, let's, let's do another exercise here, okay? Let's talk about, you know, that, well, okay. Let's get our function actually. So void print array, we're gonna do this one. We're gonna take a string array, whoa, and we're gonna take the length as an integer, right? And we're going to loop through it. So four and i equals zero, which is really our index number here. We're gonna say i is less than length, i plus plus, okay? And we're gonna print out each array value. So array of i, okay? So we're printing out each one. And this is void. So we don't have to worry about returning anything. We're just simply printing things out. Now I also need to make my definition. Okay. So let's give this a run. So let's compile it, run it. We never called it yet. <laughs> so I call it print array and I'm gonna send it the name of the array. So my array and I'm not going to send it the four that I know, okay? What I'm gonna do, I mean, I could put it all there. I'm just gonna go int, you know, size equals. Let's just take this. We already figured that out. Let's take this out, put it right there, get rid of that printout. We don't need that anymore, okay? And I'll pass it that size, okay? So it's dynamic, so I can just change it every single time. So what do we got, what do we got? Do I have an issue with this? Um, oop, semicolon. Errors happen, man, you gotta get used to them. All right, we see hi, you know, hey, hi, hello, element. It was the proper amount, watch this. I can keep changing this and just adding more values there. And we've kind of written our code to dynamically respond to different amount of elements, which is awesome, okay? Now let's look at just one more thing, okay? Let me just, let me just comment this out or delete it. Let's go back here. Okay, I'm gonna comment that out and I wanna talk a little bit about this pass by reference. So if I look at this and I go C out and I just print out the name of the array like that. Okay, watch what happens here. And I get this, right? This is a reference. This is where the first element, hey, is stored, okay? Now I'm gonna show you a little sneak peek. Watch what happens when I use the dereference operator, which is, this is about pointers. This is a little bit further ahead. 
Watch this, compile, run, boom, the first element printed out. This was a pointer to the first element. That's what we sent over. That's all we're sending, it's just the reference for the first element, okay? Now I think if I even do this, watch the plus one to that. So I'm basically taking this point in memory and adding one. If memory serves, I should, nope, it's not gonna let me do that. Okay, stand by for another date for that one, okay? All right, let's get rid of that. Darn, thought I was gonna be, oh wait, you know what? I think I know what I'm doing here. I think I have to add one to the reference. Huh? Huh? Oh, 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 oh. Boom, the next one printed out, right? So I just literally moved, hey, I'm gonna move one place in memory and I got to high, right? So that's all arrays are, it's just a block of memory and you just, you're just moving between the block, okay? All right, man, that was a lot, this is gonna be a long video. All right, all right, multi-dimensional arrays. We have the array of rays. We're not going to do an example of this one. Uh, you know, the, the, the multi-dimensional arrays can get super crazy, but I want you to think of it, it's an array of more arrays, okay? So look, we have three arrays. So we have a, a total brace that covers all the arrays, and then we have inside braces that cover each new one separated by commas, and then inside of those is an array. So look, we have three arrays, and each array has four elements, okay? Now think about your, you know, this image, all this stuff you're seeing right here. There's pixels going to left and right, and there's pixels going up and down. If you ask me, a multi-dimensional array represents a picture very, very well, okay? Now to access those elements, same thing. The first one is asking you which array are you talking about? The zero array, the one array, or the two array, and then the element. So the zero array and the first element should give you two. The second array, which is really the third, remember, because we go zero, one, two, and the third element would give you 12, okay? All right. Let's talk about C arrays versus C++ arrays versus C++ vectors. C arrays are everywhere. You're gonna see that style of arrays in, in every language. And even C++ and C++ vectors, uh, excuse me, C++ arrays and C++ vectors really look, you know, follow the C array pattern. Uh, you just get more features with C++ arrays and C++ vectors. Like you saw that we were dynamically finding the size of the array, you get functions that will do that for you. So why didn't I teach you these? It's good to learn how things work. With talking about C arrays, we got to start having conversation. What is a pass by reference? What, how is an array stored in memory? How are we really moving between those elements? Because when you start, when you learn it just by these, it feels like magic. But for computer scientists, not everything can be magic because we're the ones who are supposed to make the magic, right? So I think it's important. I feel like C arrays really show us how things work behind the scenes. And then the C++ arrays and, and C++ vectors later become super useful to save us time. Okay, it's good to know them all, all right? And plus C arrays are going to be the fastest, absolute fastest, which if you're doing memory, you know, performant tasks, you're going to need that. All right. Well, I guess that video's not as long as I thought. We got a quick code, and this is just gonna be basic arrays because we're coming up on another lab, and you know I just want you to, to know how to use arrays right now. So write a program that asks the user to input 10 ints, store them in an array, and then loop through the array and print out the largest number. You should use a function that's definition looks like this. So int find max, of course you can give it your own names, uh, int array, and then int length. Okay, now remember that's just the definition, which means it should return the largest number, not print out the largest inside of it. Okay, now here's an advanced opportunity for you. And this is the kind of stuff that you see in programmer interviews all the time is sorting. So your advanced opportunities ask user for 10 inputs or 10 ints, store them in an array, then sort the array to be ordered least to greatest, okay? So that means if I entered in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, then you should order that array. And I, when I mean order it, I mean move those values around. It'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? Um, 
that is definitely much more difficult to do, which is why it's an advanced opportunity, okay? Now, I do have an example for the first one, so let me get to that. Uh, ooh, I'm gonna move this up here so you can't see the code, okay? And I'll clear that. Okay, so let's give this a compile again. Well, let's give it a run, okay? So now you know, I didn't do any intros in this one, right? Because uh, it was a single task. But let me just enter in, you know, random numbers, 55, 10, 1, negative 5, uh, 50. So, so far 55 is our highest. Let's beat that. Then let's do 554. Five, then let's do 0. And then we only have two more numbers left. Let's do, uh, let's just do one again, and then a 10. So we know at this point that 555 was our biggest number, and it was entered in six. And then boom, the max is 555, five, five. okay? So you should get 10 numbers. These should all be stored in an array. And then you need to loop through that array and find out what your maximum number is, okay? Um, yeah, okay, so you now I know, you know, kind of thinking about it at this point, I did not, um, I did not show you how to store inputs from the user into an array, but I think you can handle that one. If not, go ahead and ask me for it, okay? Now, the very last thing I'm gonna ask for you guys is if you could go ahead and head on over to YouTube, give it a like and subscribe. I'm trying to put my information out there and see, see if I'm doing a good job. Okay, I wanna see what people think about the strategies that I take to teach this subject. And I'm gonna have timelines over there to be much more easier on the second time through. So other than that, have a good one, you guys, and I'll see you next time.